worked with uh, several different disease course phenotypes, relapsing remitting MS, secondary progressive MS, primary progressive MS. Um, and these have been incredibly useful for the way we think about populations of MS patients, for instance, for clinical trials, for thinking about outcomes for medicines and development. Um, but one of the challenges is trying to apply those sort of broad phenotypes to individual patients. Um, and just saying to someone they have relapsing remitting MS doesn't really say a lot about what that's like for the individual patient. And also saying someone has secondary progressive MS, there's a lot of stigma associated with that. People are very worried that that will mean that their MS is untreatable or that it's destined to worsen, neither of which are necessarily true. So I've tried to make a topographical model that uh, is more individualized and allows us to think about disease course in the individual patient um, in a way that's clinically nuanced for what their experience of MS has been like and doesn't necessarily lock them into a category um, that may not be representative of their disease. So one of the um, points that the topographical model is based on and, and tries to make is that there's a very particular relationship between relapses and the lesions that cause the relapses um, and progression. And that progression uh, often takes the form of the prior relapses. That's not something that has necessarily been part of the thinking about MS um, before. Uh, so this makes it a little bit more clinically uh, applicable to an individual patient that if, if someone has experienced certain symptoms of relapse and now they are beginning to have signs of progression, we can better understand what their progression is going to look like or could look like, what the symptoms might be, um, and use that to help, uh, help us prognosticate for an individual person. I think that also allows us to um, consider the disease a little bit more holistically than we did before. So perhaps to look for evidence of disease activity. So in this model, those are topographical peaks that rise from the floor of this pool and also look for signs of progression, which is when those prior symptoms start to redeclare themselves. I think both of those things can be useful for clinicians um, when thinking about patients and their uh, clinical course uh, in terms of best understanding what's happening to them, what we could do for them. I've called the topographical model a, a clinical manifestation framework because it doesn't make any claims about the particular uh, molecular mechanisms. It's not trying to explain the very nature of degeneration, neurodegeneration, or exactly what comes first, inflammation or, or degeneration. I think that there are things that we genuinely don't understand about this disease yet. And one of the important things to me in making this model was not to make any big assumptions. So to try and build the model as a clinical manifestation uh, framework, sort of see how things manifest in this disease. Not necessarily to claim precisely what's causing what. I think it, it leaves it open enough that as we get a better understanding of that underlying biology and the, the pathophysiology, we can apply it to this model. It's a way of uh, thinking about how we could quantify it down the road. So I'm talking about these topographical peaks. Well, I think we need a better understanding of exactly the tissue damage that's happening in the brain and spinal cord to know which are the worst peaks and which are the, the least worst. Um, I think we need to better understand what progression really is. But at least with this framework, we can understand how progression manifests clinically. And I think that really helps, in principle, um, us think about patient care uh, and achieve the best outcomes for people.